And anywhere else you subscribe to your podcast, go to theathletic.com backslash down to dunk and get the athletic for $3.99 a month. I am Luke. Joined this morning by Andrew. Slam through. Taylor. Now, what did the janitor say when he jumped out of the closet? Supplies? <laughs> now I know y'all be loving this. Right here, L-I-M-P. This kid is right here. People in the <laughs> house with their heads in there. Because if you don't, damn. Damn it. Slam through. And Jay. Hey, it's Jay. That's good. That's a good come back to back combo between the joke and the song. It's it was good. Perfect. I'm, I'm glad I could pick it up from last week. The, I'll, the last couple weeks have been kind of. I've been slacking, and I just want you guys to know I recognize that, yeah, and I'm trying to be better. Redeemed yourself, Luke. That's what that's, owning, that's what owning your own behavior feels like, Luke. What does that? Mean? <laughs> it's a statement. It's just a general statement. <laughs> El, no El man wouldn't know anything about that, so don't worry about that. <laughs> just to provide some context, before the podcast, El man started digging himself a hole, a pretty deep. He's hole. deep. He is six feet. <laughs> so if you feel some aggression, six feet under aggression toward him uh, in this podcast, that is real. It's true. So the second round is almost <laughs> set. Could be completely set tonight, but it won't be because the Clippers are moving on. The Clippers are going to the finals. No, I. I just am intrigued to see how do you think the Clippers and the Jazz match up? Like if you were going to look at that, evaluate yeah. that as the inevitable next round matchup. It's inevitable. I don't know. I think that the uh, – Are you doing the – I think you've been doing this. I think the Jazz – This is a jinx. I think but the Jazz yes. get the Clippers some problems. Like, I don't know. They do. They're good. They're very good. The The Clippers can't do against the Jazz what they've been able to do against the Mavericks. That's attack the rim. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So – I, I actually might favor the Jazz in real life if we're operating outside of my jinx. Mm. I might favor the Jazz in that series just because they have the offensive firepower. You know, they're not like, – the Mavericks are, are really good because of Luka. The Jazz are good because of Mitchell, Gobert, Conley. Conley's health is a big deal because mm-hmm. that Conley-Gobert pick and roll has been, a, has been something they've leaned on a lot. So Conley's healthy – I would probably favor Utah. No, that's a hamstring, right? Same hamstring problem he was having in the regular season. <laughs> yeah, I, those are just really tough issues. Like muscle issues are really tough, especially in the playoffs. Most of those guys don't play, and if they do play, they don't play well. Which thank thank goodness that they're done with this series. Yeah, I mean it's kind of perfectly timed. It's actually kind of the opposite of the Embiid injury over in the Eastern Conference, oh my where it's gosh. like if I was the Wizards, I probably would have thrown game five or whatever game it was that they just played. And they're like, Hey, let's get one more, you know, few day rest for Embiid, man. That, I mean, that's a, that is an Eastern conference altering injury. And I don't know how severe it, it is. is. They're acting as if he can treat it without any sort of surgery. So people within the Sixers have said that he could have played in that last game yeah. had it been like a game seven. So they act like it's not a big okay. deal. They okay. say, they say it's not about, because he's had a small tear in his meniscus before. It's not about the sm- it's not about that it is a small tear, it's where it is. Mm-hmm. So apparently the location of the tear isn't as concerning to them. I don't know what that means. But They're doctors, we're not. Yeah. I'll tell you though, it, we haven't discussed it yet, but I think it's maybe the best storyline of the first round. I mean the Phoenix Suns. Phoenix, yeah. Just won the series four I mean, two over yeah. the Lakers. Yeah, the Dallas Clippers series is, has been really, really, really fun. But, yes, yeah. feel-good story, it's got to be Phoenix. And you know what's weird? Both teams from the finals out in the first round this year. Like, yeah, kind of easily. Somebody actually has a Twitter question about that. So this is from at EZB300 underscore. He says, teams that were in the conference finals last year are 6 and 13 so far in this yeah. year's playoffs. Fatigue, injuries from short offseason, question mark. Surprise, this hasn't been a bigger talking point. I think it's – I would say that it absolutely is a part of it. 
Mm -hmm. I think the heat would be the one that I would not attribute necessarily to that. Yeah. I think yeah. they ran into a, an angry team in the Bucks that really wanted to prove a point. And then they also like – And their good players didn't play well. It, Jimmy, Jimmy, was, Jimmy was bad. They didn't have Jay Crowder. Jay Crowder was, was bad. bad. Yeah. Jimmy was bad. Bam was bad. Hero was bad. Those were the three guys that took them to the finals last year. Yeah. Which yeah. you can you can attribute that to the bubble as far as their play in the bubble was – and not, I wouldn't – I wouldn't say this about Jimmy and Bam, but definitely Hero. Um, yeah. I, I think that there are layers to this, but I do think that the short timeline between the end of the season and the beginning of the season. But the thing I would say about the Lakers, like Anthony Davis and LeBron missed gigantic parts of this season. Mm -hmm. So they had, over the course of what they actually had and during the regular season, they had roughly what would have been you know close to an off season. Yeah. The issue is, is – and I, I mentioned this in the, in the text thread last night, and you know Taylor and I got a miscommunication. But Anthony Davis, this is the Anthony Davis that we kind of expected to see in L.A., like injury prone. Yeah. Every year he was in New Orleans, minus maybe one, mm -hmm. he had injury problems for long amounts of time. And, and I just kind of brought up the question, I wonder if having the time off between the regular season and then in the bubble actually made it to where it may have been the only season where Anthony Davis could have stayed healthy for the entire playoff run. Yeah. I mean, he's he tried to play. He, sh he shouldn't have touched the court last night. I mean, that was very apparent. Mm -hmm. And if you're the Lakers, I mean, LeBron is not was not right either. And then basically none of your role players showed up. I mean, zero, which is a big problem. Like Alex Caruso is probably the best role player for them. And that's a problem. In this first round. Mm -hmm. And he should be he should be your seventh or eighth guy. And so it was – it's cool to see Phoenix move on. It's not – to me, it's not as cool in this way where, like, the Lakers are depleted. They just get steamrolled. Like, that to me is not as fun. I would have loved right. to see, like, a good, like, six-game series. This is not a good six-game series. This series sucked. Yeah, it did suck. Well, and I think part of it is also, like, on the Phoenix side of it, is they had three games basically without a legitimate Chris Paul. Right. Like, that shoulder was bothering him pretty clearly in the first after he injured in the first game and so it's both sides of it it wasn't the fullest now what i will say at least to celebrate a little bit is you did get to see devin booker yeah just and you don't know with these guys it's the same conversation that people are having about some of these other teams that are playing their first time in the playoffs or you know first time this guy's playing these big minutes john Morant, you know whatever mm -hmm. and you just watch devin booker and it's like he was not afraid at all of the big stage and, and actually thrived and Aiden, yeah. which was a bigger surprise yep. to me. Aiden was great. Played good defense on Anthony Davis when he was playing against him. I, here's what I'll say is there were out of the, what are you, eight different series that started mm -hmm. this playoff run. I think if you rank them as far as what's been the most enjoyable, Utah Memphis is the one I probably watched the least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you looked at Denver Portland, even though it, it still ended up being a six game series, that was a fantastic series. Uh, last night was just a straight shootout, too. The Hawks, the Hawks and the Knicks, even though it was a fight, it was a gentleman sweep. It was fun. Though. It was so was much fun. Great. Trey it, Young was so good. So good. And so, and, well, you heard Draymond Green say that at least now the world knows that Trey Young is one of the best trash talkers or one of the biggest trash talkers in the league. The, the yeah. bow yeah. he took after and the place uh, the like, Post game press conference when he was like, yeah, I know they do that on Broadway, so I thought I'd, I'd do it since I just put on a show. I was just like, that, I was like, this fan base will hate him forever. But that's cool. But exactly, it's man. Awesome. Every yeah. time the Hawks that's play so the Knicks, cool. it became something. Yes, that's so. It's if the Knicks so hate you, you have to be like special for the Knicks to hate yeah. you like that. Because you, like, you had to kill them yourself. That's why, basically did. that's why I want the Knicks to be just good all the time. I know. It, the, the, NBA, the, the NBA is better year. when the Knicks are good. Yes. Because their fingers are It's just insane. fun. Yeah, they are. Yes. I, like, actually insane. And the other series I didn't really care. I didn't watch. I mean, I about watched five minutes of it was the Brooklyn uh, Boston series, which is. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Exactly I mean, everybody, right. you, you just knew it was going to happen. Yeah. Similar to Utah Memphis. Apparently, yeah, apparently, the entire front office knew what was going to happen, too. <laughs> Slight change over with, yeah, their entire organization. So that is interesting. That like now it provides a little bit of context. Do you think Brad Brad Stevens knew that this might be a thing coming up, and that's why he turned down the Indiana job? Yeah, I mean it's hard to say. My guess is yes, because all the stuff with Ainge has been out there for a while. Yeah, 
that he was going to step down. And it happened, the change happened so quickly. Like Boston didn't just make the move with Ainge or Ainge make his move and then, like, well, what do we do? Brad, do you want it? I mean, yeah, this it has been bang, bang. Yeah, this has been something that's been going on for a long time. So, you know, I, and I wondered about Presti, you know, whenever just the first report came out, you know, that he was for sure stepping down. It's like, okay, well, what do they do now? I mean, they probably called and obviously it didn't get anywhere, but you have to think that, you know, there's, that's a good opportunity for somebody and probably for Sam. I mean, eventually Sam may move on and that, that would be a, a team that you could imagine that he would actually go to. So yeah. it was kind of, I don't know, it was, you didn't really even get the time to think about it all that much though, because the reports came so fast. So, but yeah, I think that this has been, in the, obviously it's been in the works for a long time behind the scenes with Brad. But well, I, I love how quickly after like a playoff loss first round, it's like the knives come out and it's just like, we're yeah, that was uh, that was ready to go. And yeah, it had to have been number yeah. one. Number two is I wonder if any of that, and this is totally just speculation, has nothing to do with reality, probably. But it does that if this is part of the conversation for the last two months. Like Danny Ames is at least starting the conversation with Brad. Stevens. Like, hey man, I'm, I think this is the end of my my time here, and you know, and and then Brad saying, you know, like I'd like to put my name in the hat for for some front office opportunities because and the one of the reports came out that brad stevens was exhausted from coaching like the bubble just kind of exhausted him um i just i wonder if part of that conversation could have bled into the team at all like if you're if you're yeah. coaching and or running a team with one foot out the door like how Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just wonder if that would have bled into yeah. whether or not you, it, you know, Brad may have said, hey, I'm given the same amount of effort that I've always given, but I just think it's hard to be where you are if you're thinking about what's next. Yeah. Like emotional, like mentally yeah. actually being there a hundred percent. And in a season that. that is also like everything went wrong. Yeah. You know, whether by your intentions or lack thereof, like just the season was a disappointment early on. And so I just wonder if any of that would have impacted towards the end. And then Jalen Brown obviously getting hurt and, yeah, I just don't understand Brad's don't move it. at all. Like, I just don't, because he's like, okay, I'm burnt out, so I want to do a job that could potentially be a lot harder than the coaching job. And like that, the only thing that's more difficult about coaching is the travel. But like right now, like the GM job is or the president of basketball ops job is twenty four seven three sixty five. Like he's working right now. If you're a coach, you can probably go to Hawaii right now. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't get that. Like I'm burnt out, so give me a job where I literally yeah. have no break. And we think of like the president of basketball ops job as just like, okay, they're building a team. Like they're like in charge of like all the community stuff that goes on within the team. They're in charge of so many projects that no one has any clue about. And like he wants to take that on like that job is to me that job is harder to me that job and especially trying to to do what the celtics need to do yeah. that's reshape the roster with a contract with kimball walker that's going to be really hard to move and really hard to get value out of and then you don't have a lot of draft assets you don't have a lot of ways to get better like why like why would you pick that job like why is that job easier why is that the job that you pick when you're burnt out also, a team that, like, right now, people are really questioning their, let's just say, culture yeah. around the team. Yeah. And fan yes. culture and stuff. It's like, that's a lot. That's that you his job take now, on too. Team. Yeah. That's his job now, too, is to yeah. make sure that that somehow gets flipped around, too. I mean, that's. Do we want to. I don't get. I just. Why don't does get he it. get that the job? Book. Why do we even get that? Why does he get that job? Oh, he's obviously created enough credibility as the coach i mean they yeah but who well, else gets that job like that what do you mean like stan van gets that job but he's also the coach and that and then that doesn't I mean, work Popovich out doc rivers kind of that it. doc rivers kind of had that but they're still coaching they like, obviously they obviously that. value brad a lot because i think that he may have said i kind of want to go do something else and they said well we want to keep you in we want you to stay like here Calvary, yeah. we want you to stay here we'll give if you yeah. know danny lose would you take the basketball ops job 
Why does Utah give Danny Ainge that job? That's speculative, right? Like that's it's, not happening. That is right? speculative, and it and it could be that somebody within the front office of Utah moves on. Like we don't know yet. Like, also, that one, yeah. that one's not set in stone at all. Danny, the also, I think you said this on Wednesdays. Like the owner of, they're like BYU classmates or something. Oh, like they're like they're there's some sort of connection. But, yeah, they're 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 buddies. They're Mormon buddies. Yeah. They are. Yes. Is so Danny Ainge is Mormon. Yeah, I went to BYU. So just this an assumption. A practicing Latter Day Saint, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> here's a, here's the number one thing that Brad Stevens needs to think about. Number one thing about two abs. No, no. no. <laughs> you can't. You cannot step and disrespect the logo. Don't step on it. Oh, baby, don't do it. It's the rudest thing a basketball player can do. Did you guys? Do you guys care? If would you guys care at all if Kevin Rick came and stepped on the Thunder logo? What Would you care? What, the Thunder logo would. doesn't have a face, though. It is step on. It's also we don't know, have a but tradition. It has that, a like, face. Yeah, it, it's the. I mean, number one is Boston has like a long history of just being an easily agitated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're known for being ridiculous fans. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I mean, it, it. I would. I would have been frustrated if I was a Boston fan and had Kyrie's experience or my experience with Kyrie. I guess. And he did that. I would have been like angry enough to tweet something. You'd have been like, "Are you kidding me?" Yeah, exactly. Definitely. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, I think we. I I think that the Thunder fans would have been just as mad. Absolutely. If that, if that happened, if Kevin did stomp on our logo like that when he came back, yeah, I kind of want him to. He would be. He the fan base would be on fire. They would be so mad. It would yeah. we have thrown happen. a water bottle at him. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, careful. I don't know. I'm not. I'm Boston not going to act man. like we're like totally above how Boston fans no, feel. No, no one bit. No. <laughs> we would. You can't trust one. Here's the thing. That was one guy that did that. That threw the water bottle out of like how many? Who did, kind were, of looked were like they full? Who kind of looked like Peyton Pritchard? Fifteen thousand. Kind of looked like Peyton did Pritchard. look like Peyton Pritchard. <laughs> if you got a lifetime ban from like. Chesapeake Energy Arena. I think that would be so easy to get around. Does the lifetime ban? Yeah. It's all events. All events transition there. to when the name changes. I I, no, I don't know. Does not. <laughs> it's new. non-binding. You're a lawyer. I'm just asking. Well, I don't know. For legal advice. I don't know. Just in yeah. case. But I think it would be the easiest thing to get around. Because I'll just be like, hey, buy a ticket in your name. Give it to me, and I'll wear a hat and and a mustache. Yeah. This is the second week glasses. you mentioned this. Well, yeah. I think it's right. Yeah. <laughs> Was it last week? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I think it's right. It'd be the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. Maybe. Probably so. So it just has no. So just throw water balls all the time. Just throw them around, baby. Yeah. There's no. No, I think you're, I think you're right though. Every fan base has the chance of one person doing something like that. Absolutely. My, well, so, we had the pink flamingo guy. What's his name? Pink flamingo guy. Yeah, big old dummy head. Yeah. And he like showed up at Katie's house. Remember yeah. that? Yeah, Putting yeah. signs in his he yard. Burned, he burned his jersey. That yeah. was awesome. No, not awesome. Yes, that, guy that was hilarious. No, and if he wa- listens to this, he will absolutely punch me in the face in public. If he Probably will. Punch yeah. through That's the face. kind he's of guy I can't toward. He's a massive person. Well, also, yeah. he's definitely on pills. <laughs> well, okay. Well, we can't <laughs> just go around making accusations. edits. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> Take <And> John's <laughs> back to it. Bigger in victory. Tejon's back to it. Hello, welcome to Tejon's back to it. Figury Diggory. Wednesday night, the Mavs starting lineup was the tallest in postseason history because they started po- uh, Boban and Porzingis. Yeah. It would be the second tallest. It would be tied for second tallest in regular season history as well, only behind another earlier Mavs team. That Mavs team was Hubert Davis at 6'5", Michael Finley at 6'7", Dirk at 7 foot, Chris Anstey? How do you say his name? Anstey? This is seven your, foot. your segment, man. Yeah, I don't know this guy, Chris Anstey. This is like a 98 team or something. And then Shad Bradley at 7'6". Those are some tall boys. Shad Bradley's so tall. So I didn't know he was 7'6", though. Yeah. That's insane. Is that Boban's height? How tall it's is insane. <coughs> I don't think Boban's 7'6". I don't know that he's that tall. Yeah. That's Taco Fall, a seven six. Yeah, yeah, Taco Fall is. That is crazy. But uh, do you guys want the Mavs to keep starting that lineup? Hey, I they kind of have to, right? Just yeah. when Carlisle, man, is seven four Boban. Talk about a guy that just has carte blanche to like 
do whatever. Because the whole point of that, from what it felt like, was just like, hey, we've got to try something different to get yeah. them out of rhythm. Mm-hmm. Put this weird lineup, and it worked. It totally worked because the Clippers were going small. Yeah, they on had, them. Yeah, they had to. They had to do something to combat the way that they were attacking the rim. You and know, isn't did. that interesting that a coach, instead of just <laughs> when a team adjusts, you don't adjust. We're used to some coaches not adjusting. Yeah, if to OKC teams had Rick Carlisle, we would have won 30, uh, 30 championships in championships. 10 years. Yeah. Well, my answer or my question uh, <laughs> to you guys, what's the ideal height for your job, your life? So it doesn't have to be what you think all like the mm-hmm. ideal man height is, but yours. Do you think you could benefit from being taller or shorter? Would it was it what job would benefit from being shorter? Uh, Can we I don't have know. an example? You know, that's uh, up to you. I wanted <clears throat> to leave this up to you. Jockey. Yeah, jockey. Gymnast. Yep, gymnast. There we go. Thank you, Luke. Um, okay. Cave explorer. Cave explorer. <laughs> Spelunker. 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 So, uh, a guy that's like getting shot out of a cannon. Cannon guy. Yeah. It's really just circus in general. So lots of people. Plumber. Yeah, mechanic, there's a lot. maybe. A plumber. Oh, actually, that yeah. guy. That you reminds me of a story. Be a mechanic. It's true. Trust me. Plumber that has to get under, like, crawl in the crawl space. Yep. So yeah. there's this guy in Bethany. Bethany, a lot of just plumbers, just dudes, big dudes mm-hmm. that, like, don't work for a company. Mm-hmm. They have one guy that they all call when they need to get in the crawl space. It's this little guy. And he's just the guy. And he makes so much money because he's the only one that's small enough. <laughs> he's, like, Shame trained as a plumber. And so every everyone calls him. Young guy, old guy. Comes in. He's like in his 40s, 50s. He's just a small guy. Okay. Y'all ever been in a crawl space? No. Uh, no. no, I will never go no. in there. That's a, it my, is a place. Because like my home nightmares. inspector like shimmied underneath my house to like go look at it. And Inspect just, things? And I was just like, what if they never come out? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, I'll just leave it's them there. home now. Like they I just, just live in there. Uh, yeah, you what? Have to go head first. And they put the suit on that has like the, yeah. the bug suit so they don't get bugs all on them. Oh, mine did anyway. God. Looks like a space, space. She looked like a space woman. So what's your ideal height, Taylor? Um, I, I would actually benefit from being a little shorter, I think. Maybe two inches shorter. So apparently a potter. Yeah, because, well, at least the way that I do it. Because I have to bend over too much, so it's kind of hard on my back. So yeah. I think I would benefit a little bit. But there, I don't know. Maybe like it's good to have the, uh, you know, you, the body weight over it. Yeah. It does what about being really small, like an elf size? Hmm. No, that would be there. There's, <laughs> there's definitely too small. Think of the intricate designs you could do because you're just right up there. If I had like tiny little, if you're like a key, like saying. keyboard yeah. elf, you live in a tree. It does take some like, uh, you know, some. Uh. You don't think you could be strong and be an elf? That's horrible. No, I mean you could be strong for an elf, but like, yeah, you know, Jake could still pick you up and throw you across the room because he's a bear. Wait, is is that a danger in pottery? If you're an elf, yeah, I mean, that's, that's you know Smurfs. So you just pick them up. Just chunk them, chunk <laughs> I them kind off. of imagine like a Keebler elf. Keebler elf. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, they make um, cookie sized potteries. <laughs> I guess you could specialize in tiny pottery. Yeah, uh, Luke and Jay, I thought actually could benefit from being taller, super just because it's like super tall lawyer. Yeah, you have the jury's attention because you're so big. Yeah, yeah. Public being like a in front of public yeah it only helps you because be when you stand up and us uh, from you know from from the desk and it's just how tall oh, is too tall i would say i would say i don't think there is seven six seven, seven six, six is, is too tall. big yeah. when you're when it, like you have to get in like elevators and stuff and like small doorways and like courthouse it'd be very intimidating yeah. though you know what though there I, is I wish a point. I was six ten Six ten would be. This great. is for not not my current life as much as like I would have had a shot to maybe at least play in Europe about six ten. Well, yeah. I mean, you'd be playing. You'd play football for sure at yeah. six ten. Uh, there's not a lot of six ten football. No, players. no. if no. you're six ten and wanted to play football, you'd be playing for the Dolphins for years now, man. Yeah, man, my whole body would be wrecked. I'd have brain uh-huh. brain injuries. It'd be wonderful. I mean, you could be an offensive lineman. Sure, Calais Campbell is like six eight, six nine. You'd be the sickest center in the <laughs> nice. I'd like to be six six. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, let I'm me ask you this: six three. You're six what? Six, I'm six three. I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little under six three, but I I, I you? claim six, six three. three. You're six. Even. Andrew, you're close to six foot. Yeah, I'm you're close six. to yeah. it. Yeah. I'd like to be six six, maybe six seven. Yeah. 
We're the tallest. We might be the tallest podcast lineup. That's not I NBA players. So. That, probably, that might be true. Total up inches in, up in smoke. Probably taller. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> NBA player podcast. All, all the smoke. Yeah. Is all that what it's called? Smoke. Yeah. Yeah. Up in smoke. I don't know what that is. Cheech and Chong movie, maybe. <laughs> um. Okay. 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 I have one more question about this. Sorry, Andrew. Yeah. This is good. Take but the time. This man. is very important. When someone is like super duper tall, like we're talking seven six, mm-hmm. if they got up in front of you and were amazing speakers and really intelligent, yeah, it would surprise you, correct? A big, a you dope. would not expect them to be like skilled in other ways than just being super tall. I don't, I don't equate tallness with dumbness. I think you would though. I think not that you would think they were dumb, but if they were as good a speaker as Jay is, you'd be like, wow, that person is that tall and that good at speaking. All right. Oh, it's too bad we don't have time for a deep dive. Uh, Let's go to the stream real quick. My deep dive. <laughs> you oh, can't right. cancel He's, today. I have been muted unjustly. All right. So in the stream, <laughs> we have. Um, Sam the man. We have Bailey Sanderson from Adelaide, Australia. Lawrence Field. We have Jamie in Mexico. We have Miguel Devella uh, from the Philippines. We've got Christos in Greece. We have Wojciech, who is in Germany, I believe. We've got Nathan Stinson in Poto. Oh, Poto. We have Ryan Ty in New Zealand. We have Sweet A's. Tyler Field in Edmond. Could be here live. Could be outside my window. Uh, oh, Jake God. Hendricks in Kansas City. Crimson King in Henrietta. Let's Somebody see. in there from Lexington, Kentucky, man. I know. I love Lexington. Just jumped, yeah. Uh, w, well, Rose, do declare. w Rose. W Rose in Lexington, Kentucky. Stephen Clay's in Belgium. We have Kyle Clark in Orlando, Florida. Jesse's been there. Been to Orlando. That's great. <laughs> been no there. Deal. Been there. Done that. A few times. Been there. Jesse's, I've been to Orlando. <laughs> Jesse Smith in Tulsa. Been there. Been, been to Tulsa. I've been there. I've been there. Falcon, Denmark. No. Nope. I've been there. Have you really? Yep. Been there, Denmark. Dang, man. Turtle. 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 <laughs> tortoise. Is it turtle? It's tortoise. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. We'll be right back after this quick break this episode is sponsored by blue chew guys it's been a crazy year i feel like i have aged 12 years and 12 months and if you're like me you're feeling your age more than you used to especially in the bedroom it's time to snap out of it Spring is here and it's time to get sprung with Blue Chew. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and at the fraction of the cost. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed professional medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive a prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. Bluetooth's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and strength for your prescription. If you don't like swallowing pills, that's no problem here. You just chew these up. Bluetooth's tablets are made in the U.S. and they prepare and ship direct, so it's cheaper than the pharmacy. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, visit Bluetooth.com for more details and important safety information. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use the promo code DUNK at checkout and just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code DUNK to receive your first month for free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring today's podcast. And we're back after that quick break. Twitter questions! Oh man, unmuted. No. Back to, back no. To All right. First Twitter question <laughs> comes from up to ask. Up to ask. Where's the lo- lotto party? He's just getting louder. Wow. Where's the lotto party? <laughs> We're not going to have a lotto party. We will have a podcast following the lottery. It's also such a quick thing. It lasts yeah. like half an hour. Uh, so I don't know. We're not going to have and, a lotto party. So just to be honest also like this is not a moment you want to probably see 
us in or one another in. Yeah, if it doesn't go well, we don't really want to be there. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to meet a. Well, I know. So we're, if it goes, we're if it wait, I mean, many of you. Yeah, this is like a high ceiling, low floor situation. Like it could be great. Right. Like, it could be the greatest moment ever. It could be the worst moment ever. So we'll, we'll try to figure out if we watch we'll it do, together. We'll figure out like a video. We'll do and I'm back. No, you don't have to He's do that. Gone. You don't have to. He's acting out now, Andrew. Yeah, he I know. doesn't know He's, what to do. He is a child that needs punished. Yeah, he doesn't know what to do. Okay. All right. At Brody Speaks says, okay, <laughs> listen to this. Yes. You're ruining everything. Okay, listen to this. Y'all always talk about. You can go. <laughs> you can leave. You always talk about trading for a disgruntled young star. What are the chances we see Jason Tatum one out of Boston? How many picks do you think it would take? I think mm. it's a big jump. This yeah. uh, Boston's not trading him. I just no. don't. I just don't see that happening anytime soon. How many picks would it take? All of them. Six. I mean, six. I mean, is this a lot. is a guy. This they're not trading him. He just scored fifty in the playoffs. They're not. No, like no, the no. Only. He's like the only reason that they could yeah. be good. Yeah, yeah. But okay, Jalen though. Is there? Is that? Different. Maybe if they if they figured out that they were redundant and they had an option, but you're not trading him for picks. You're trading him for hey, yeah. we need a better piece to complement. We're going all in on Jason Tatum, yeah, mm-hmm. and so we can move Jalen for I don't know, insert whatever. Bradley Beal, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then maybe you would have that conversation. Like but. if Beal and Beal yesterday to the media at exit interviews is like, yeah, I don't want to leave. And the Wizards are like, yeah, we're never going to trade him. Why does B? Why? So he's just loyal, man. That's one of his things, apparently. But he really wants to win in Washington. Like he really, really wants that. To be fair, I think, does he see that that's a possibility? I think the Wizards. I, I don't, I don't think they have. They're even remotely close to a championship. But I do think that you will see the Wizards be a better team. Thomas Bryant coming back and then having gap. Like they're they're going to be a better team. And if I don't know what they're going to do to actually retool or add anything to the roster or I don't yeah. even know if they have the flexibility, but having Denny come back like another seat, I think they have a chance to be better. I think they could obviously get out of the playing game is my bet with this wizards. But yeah, for me in Boston, I think the thing about the Celtics, it's hard is it's really easy to default to like, man, they've got a lot of work on their hand and maybe they're, but dude, they, if they could figure out, and, and this is what I would do if I was Brad Stevens now in this role and maybe him being the coach mm-hmm. shifts his, perspective on what they need to do it it's not it's not a complete overhaul i don't think so either. like can you move tristan thompson kimball walker it, and i don't care man at this point with this squad and being boston i i would leverage whatever picks you needed to to retool this roster as is and then go after it like yeah i don't know who's out there that could be got but yeah. you're not far off yeah yeah for me jalen brown jason tatum Marcus Smart, and then everybody else is a, an asset to get you something else. Yeah. Even picks. Like, if it takes you, if somebody wants to give you their star for Kimba and a couple firsts, bye. Like, all right, cool. Because yeah, you've been stockpiling for picks Kemba? forever and have just been hitting, like, you've just been swinging and missing. Now, Brad may be able to scout. He may be able to, and this is what you might get with Brad Stevens. You might get the a better evaluator of talent in the NBA draft all and not digging on Danny age. Obviously he drafted both of those guys we just talked about, but mm-hmm. he's missed on a lot of those mid to late lotto guys. So if Brad can hit on those, maybe that's it. But for me, it's not, you, in a city like Boston, you don't, your draft capital is not as high of a priority as create, especially in this current season as utilizing them to create a roster that makes sense. Yeah. Their roster had tremendous flaws this last year. And they just they had so many errors, man. You can't let Gordon Hayward. If it's true that Gordon Hayward was on the table for Miles Turner and Doug McDermott, yeah, that that's an a- error. That's a that's a horrible decision by Danny Ainge to miss that. Yeah, to get nothing back, maybe Evan Fournier. Like, yeah, that's that's, that's horrible. That loss. was the choice. It was either those two or Fournier. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's Miles Turner and Doug McDermott immediately made this team They're, better. Yeah. No question. So it's like the, it doesn't take. It's hard, like because we do we we have such a sour taste because they were the eight seed. They got beat in a gentleman sweep. Didn't look very good. But they're they're one or two moves away from being right back in it. I agree. So, so we're not trading for Tatum. 
So hey who's going to trade for Kemba? We don't have to actually talk about it, but it's like, but like I, I said, know. like if that, if that's somebody, I mean, Oklahoma somebody, City, like there, I don't think OKC would do it, but I'm saying like, if you were able to stop thinking that your draft picks were that significant for you, right. Trade yeah. a pick in Kemba and retool your roster. Yeah. But you have to get an asset back. I think you have to get a player that can actually contribute. Like the Horford thing actually makes sense because I think he would be an upgrade for who they were for the next year. It would make so. sense for them. I don't know that if I'm the Thunder, I would want no, to no, touch right. that. But contract, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's are there other teams out there that are trying that have the Detroit? Like, I couldn't put a like Jeremy Grant, give him a first, Jeremy Grant, whatever else it takes to make the cap work and move him. Bo- yeah, Boston would jump at that. <clears throat> He'd probably have to do two firsts. But I mean, am I crazy to think like, why not? I mean, I would. I, yeah, no, you're not crazy. Hey, guys, let's move on to our next Twitter question. It comes from at the Nick Orman, who wants to know how many selections will the Thunder make in the draft this year? So they have five picks. Whoa. And it'll be their own pick in the lottery. It'll either be the Rockets or the Miami pick. Which is like a forty-seven to forty-eight oh percent chance gosh. that they could get the Rockets pick. That's hey, would you take a yeah. coin flip? I mean, isn't it nuts? nuts? Yeah, and then they have thirty-five, thirty-six, and fifty-five. Hey, it's fifty-five. So it's fifty-five. Yeah, they've got and like thirty-five and thirty-six. Those are valuable. Yeah. And so the question is, will they select all of those? I don't think so. My guess is there will be some kind of consolidation at some point within here. Like thirty five and thirty six yeah, yeah. to trade up for th- to thirty two or yeah, to to twenty nine or something like that. I can't believe that Sam couldn't get the Warriors to lessen the protection on that when they traded for Ubre. Like one to fifteen, one to twelve. Like, mm. yeah. I mean, in hindsight, like that's like Ubre is just not that good. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, and I think like I think both teams knew that, you know, at the time. That, like yeah, we can't give up. We can't do a lottery protected pick for him because he doesn't make that big of an impact. Yeah, you know, I mean, but it's like for me, I'm like, there's three. What were they? What, the Warriors end up drafting 17 or something like that, or yeah. 16. It's like, gosh, it's so close to having two. Yeah, mid teens. You know. Anyway, I mean, not that I, that couldn't for me. I think more of that is like tools to move up you know yeah like, yeah well we don't and the 18th or whatever well if we get been. the one and five jay where are you going to move up to true yeah well we just don't know they could acquire i mean they acquired several picks last year and then traded some to move up to get poku like we we don't know what they want we don't know what the evaluations are on any of these guys uh from the thunder's perspective but they can they have the tools to to move up to move out completely to you know, trade these picks for future picks. I mean, but my guess is that they'll probably have three max four, but yeah, probably into like three makes more sense. Uh, but who knows? It could be five. You don't want to bring in five guys to camp though. Probably. Unless that it's you the food. It. Five guys. Delicious. Food. Ooh, too expensive. I think that I'll never do it. It, it is kind it, of expensive. It's hard. Is Number one is if you want to be able to look like you're going somewhere yet, also be very bad playing five rookies would be the way to do it yeah exactly so yeah. that's if that's your it, i don't know i i think that we'll see My guess, we have a lot of draft picks every year now so it's like okay are we just going to start cycling three to five no, guys yeah well and, and, and if three of and if three of them are second round picks though like the yeah, odds that the 35 36 and 55 are going to even play in the nba for right. more than three years is like very low you can have yeah. draft and stash i think i mean also remember like the blue are going to be back right like, they'll be able to throw to those normal. guys yes. they'll be playing at the whatever i don't know where they play now since it became like a movie theater or movie production right. site but yeah it's one of those things where like they're going to have the full complement of all these other places to store these guys because you're not even thinking about the fact that they have Vit Krejci that is supposedly going to be somewhat in the organization and has been around for the last year rehabbing. Yep. You, we don't know what's going to happen may with Mitchich. Mitchich, right? Like, There's a lot of those. It, it's hard as this is one of those things where we start overthinking it. It's like, do we... I mean, Sam obviously has a plan. Like, He's not like, yeah. oh, we just want to roster with 45 draft picks. Right. I mean, yeah. These picks will be traded. Like there will be traded picks, most likely in this draft. Some of these will be traded, but going forward, 
I mean, you can't select all of them. I yeah, mean, and the, even that 55 could be traded for like cash considerations, right? Like if they want some cash, they could probably get some cash. Who doesn't love cash? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. For next Twitter question it comes from at Alaskan Strummer, who wants to know what ads have you historically hated for at Alaskan Strummer? It's Red Bull and AT and T. Hmm, I've always enjoyed Red Bull ads. Red Bull yeah, gives you kind of, wings, kind of like a weird cartoonish kind of thing. Yeah, they're yeah. nice. They're creative. You know, something different from I've all the other ads. The insurance company. I ads. hate like Liberty Geico, Mutual. Progressive. What about this one? You got the brawn. I got the brain. Let's make lots of uh, 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 and then, uh, and then it fades out. I don't know. I don't know. I've never heard Are of you that. kidding me? Not kidding. Hold on. You guys might be. That commercial is plastered on every. When? What's it for? On TV. Like right progressive. Now? I think progressive insurance. Mm. Yes. Okay. Right now. All right. I don't think I've ever. I'll have to be thinking about it. You're kidding. I did at least catch the tune a little bit. And so maybe it's in my mind. A guy driving in in a car down the. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. In the desert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his like little Cadillac statuette woman is singing to him. Yeah, I'm with you. (laughs) I hate the Liberty Mutual commercials. Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. Yeah, and the Limu Emu. Hate it. Limu Emu. It's the Emu that it doesn't make any sense. They just don't explain what the product is. They just have. I. A horrible commercial. You've connected it though. They've done their job. Uh, I mean, that's you're not wrong. But I hate it. Yeah. Huh. Oh, I mean, you know what I think they should do? And what I, they should just have Shaq on every commercial. No, they should. I'm so tired of seeing Shaq. I kind of am too. And I, I need I, more I Shaq. Love Shaq. Every yeah. commercial. He's just so bad. <laughs> that's the <laughs> thing. It's like Shaq isn't good enough to be on everything. Yeah. Well, his 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 takes are just so archaic yeah like K- koc said it in his mock draft yeah. he's like somebody oh no it was a uh, tarks or uh, somebody said it to kevin o'connor he's like evan mobley is going to be a guy that Shaq absolutely hates yeah that's a good call because he yeah. doesn't play traditional like he's, he's just not going to back somebody down and right like, nobody does that except for mb occasionally right yeah who does it? literally no one else Jokic. does that Jokic does it too yeah yeah, he's not going to put people in the rim. No, but that's not anyway. I'm not. I can't get into the. Yeah, we don't have to yeah, go there. Thank that's you, okay. That's okay. Just too much Shaq. I need more Shaq. No, I need all Shaq commercials. No, I do it. I would like. <laughs> all right, let's move on to our next Twitter question. It comes from at Chad Imus three three, who wants to know what is a food Chad or is. drink that most people like you ab- that most people like. That you absolutely detest. I got it. Most people like it. You hate it. Go ahead. I don't know. What do you like? I hate. I don't hate it, but I'm not as like, and this is more of an embarrassment. Is I'm not like a, this is a safe place. I'm not like a pure sushi guy. Yeah. Oh, like what? a sashi, you're like sashimi. I, I'm not like, nigiri. I just don't do a ton of raw anything, uh, yeah. let alone raw fish. I just don't do it. And I feel honestly like it's not something I hate, but it's just something I'm like, this is probably where Jay needs to culture up a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. you need to come with me. To, to I know I, I can teach you some stuff. It's so good. <laughs> I'll teach you. I'll teach you. <laughs> Making me uncomfortable. I'll teach you. You'll, you'll become my sushi, my sushi Padawan. Hey, come over to my house. I'll uh, be laying on a table. I'll have sushi ready <laughs> on me. some sushi. I'll teach you some stuff, baby. I don't like mushrooms. Oh, I love mushrooms. I love mushrooms. Really? Yeah. But there's so uh, I hate sometimes onions. you can only get umami from adding mushrooms. That's where the umami flavor comes from. Uh, yep. Packed full. I of think umami. they're kind of flavorless mushrooms. They they huh? soak. Uh, I, they so, they can soak up the I flavors of what they're kind of a at. dull flavor on their own. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. I think you're getting bad <laughs> what, mushrooms. What? We'll do this. I don't know. I think you're getting I'm bad good. mushrooms. No, you, no, I understand. There's there's different brands or styles of mushrooms. Yeah, and yeah. You get a little bit more flavor. Just the generic mushroom. Like it's all about what you cook it with. Okay, like a beef stroganoff. Yeah, but that's because of everything else that goes into it. <sighs> oh, it doesn't taste like that without the mushrooms, baby. Okay. Uh, I'm not a salmon guy. People really? love salmon. Wow. Yeah. I'm trying to do it. I'm kind of like you, Jay. Like yeah. I'm trying to like, you know, culture up a little bit. A mm-hmm. lot of people like salmon. It's mm-hmm. kind of, it's very like feel regal you know kind of royal sure. if i like salmon mm-hmm. so i'm trying to do it sprouts has some good marinated salmon so i'm trying it grilled 
you know, yeah, for some our, of that Weber Nation. Oh, yeah, Weber Nation. <laughs> Luke, what about you? I yeah. like all food, and I will eat it all. Is there's there no, nothing you don't like. Nothing? True. I mean, really, no. I'll eat it all. I like it all. It's. I. That's just not true. I do. There's really gotta like be something. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't like it. Um, I'm hungry. I eat. Okay. Hey guys, let's move on to the next Twitter question. It comes from at Dort Poi, who wants to know, how would you guys feel if KD and Harden win it all with the Nets? Poor. Terrible. And it has nothing to do with those guys. I just don't want the Nets to win. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I, I am pulling in the East. I literally am pulling for every other team. Mm -hmm. I would I'd be excited if the, the Hawks won, which would be shocking and would make... Yeah. There's a lot of crow eating. Yeah, a lot of crow not. eating on this podcast. I'll Hawks, eat no crow. You will eat all of it. You'll eat all the crow. Apparently, that's what Alex said. I, you know, I'm not a crow guy either. Yeah, I don't so, like crow. I'm not a fan. Uh, I don't like crow traditionally, and don't like crow. <laughs> but you look at every other team in the Eastern Conference. I'd be excited about winning. The Sixers. Yeah, if the Sixers is, finally broke through. Like that would be cool. Part of it is the way they built their team. Uh, and then you go to the Western Conference, like Suns. Yeah. I'd be excited about the Suns. I'd be okay with the Jazz. I don't love the Jazz. Yeah, uh, I w I don't know that I would be okay with the Jazz. No, I d yeah, I'm not with the Jazz. But Denver obviously. Denver would be, would really be great. Cool Suns would be great. Dallas would be great. Clippers, Clippers, Clippers be Clippers would be great. It's gonna happen, so we don't yeah, really have you. a choice. So I just I don't. Shouldn't we be rooting for the Bucks as OKC fans? Definitely, Absolutely. definitely. That's the team. Yeah, that's it. And they're also kind of a smaller market. Like, well, yeah, that's why I'm saying it. Like, we should root for what we wanted, right? And also, it would be great to see the Bucks beat the Nets. It would be awesome. It would. It's this is like a this is America's series, right? Yeah. And it's America versus the Nets, right? <laughs> Whose greatest player is yeah. from Greece? But you know, you know, what I you, mean. it represents yeah I, the spirit of uh, who we are as a people. Yeah, we. Yeah, the coach's name is Bud. <laughs> That's true. It's just your Bud. Yeah, I. Yeah, it's just your Bud, man. Yeah, that's the that's. Actually, Easily the most Mike, intriguing right? series. Mike Budenholzer. In yeah, you yeah. call him Coach Bud. Yeah, Coach Bud. Yeah. Although Steve's a pretty American name too, but he's from Canada. That's true. Oh, yeah, that's so true. Okay, uh, let me ask you though. Mm -hmm. Can you... <laughs> I want to believe that the Bucks can do it. Yeah, absolutely. They can. Okay. Certainly they can. Okay, okay good. I just... I just think the Bucks have the opportunity. I think they have the guys to defend all three of them at one time. I think yeah. that's what is so different from and they have depth the sixers can do it too uh and the sixers will give them problems if it all depends for me is philly is all depends on Embiid's health if Embiid can't be 100 percent, i don't even know if they beat the hawks there's just something I, I don't trust about simmons too it's like even if Embiid is healthy they're really good but god they need simmons to be good every game and he was good against Washington, so that's encouraging. Yeah, they just for me is the a Sixers lot of can just throws. defend. Like the Sixers can defend. He made for some free throws in the last game. Yeah, but it was like, what did he? He still ended the series like twenty five to thirty percent from the free throw line. Yeah, I mean they they started going to the hack of Simmons. Yeah, early in game five, which I don't really love. That was the mo I forgot that Brooks did that so much, and I was like, "You're still doing but that." But he did huh? this. But he but he does the thing where he wants to do it, but then once he went three out of four, yeah. he like doesn't commit to it. And, and then like, there's what two are we minutes doing, left, man. Still. Yeah, that exactly. Really familiar, actually. I yes. Feel like I yeah, he's still doing the yes, same thing. We, yes, where he. I don't. I don't understand the strategy behind it. I just think ben, against the Nets, Simmons could get to the rim. Yeah, yeah absolutely. which yeah. is what Giannis is doubt. also going like. Oh, Giannis is going to average like Giannis Andrew. In this yeah, so I think, and I don't know what it means that DiVincenzo. Like, I don't know how big of a loss that is for the Bucks. Yeah, I mean, it feels like something, but it's it, something. It's a loss, but it's it's not losing one of their main three yeah. guys. If Forbes plays like he did against the Brent heat. Forbes, can just hit threes. They're going to they're going to attack Brent Forbes. That was the problem. Is yeah. That, they're going to try to get him on a switch, which means they'll put Tucker in pretty quick. And Tucker hasn't been but really much of anything. And that's a good thing about the Bucks this season is they're so much deeper with guys that they can actually trust. Yeah, you know, like guys that actually finish it. Yeah. Like Bobby Portis is still somebody that's Portis playing is really at a, good. High level, first round. Yeah, you know, Connington. Pat Connington. Connington. Yeah. 
It's fine. I like the Bucks. This is the Bucks' best shot that they had. The hard part is they're just yeah. running into the best Eastern Conference top. The, the in, probably the best offense. I mean, the best that, offense yeah. we've ever seen. Yes, ever. Can the Nets stay healthy? I don't know. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. But we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> the three when of them that? are like combining to score a hundred points a night. It's so insane what they're doing. When does it start? Yeah. Tomorrow. Game one is tomorrow. Yep. Oh wow! Hey, tonight's the big one though, boys. When the Clippers the, annihilate the Mavs. Yeah, come tie Dallas. it back up. Yeah, it's yep. gonna be. They're, yeah, it's just gonna be rough for the Mavs. Poor it's Mavs. Our Sorry, hearts, Mavs. Our hearts go out to Dallas. I hope everyone knows what you're doing they here do. because I think, everybody okay. knows. Okay. That's all I'll say. I just wanted to make sure we're all on the same page. All right. Paul George finals MVP. I'm you're confusing me. Mavs fan for now, right? Isn't that what the that's that's a I always think that's a like cuss word kind of thing. Yeah, mother yeah, that's what I think every time mm-hmm. I read it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So but it's not. It, well, like you know, the the hashtag Mavs fan for life. Ah, Oh, like everybody has that. If you're a Mavs fan, like that's your Twitter profile. It's like Andrew Mavs fan for life. Like that's what it is. That's what that is. So, but we put the end there because we're just fans for now. For now, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Monday Night Football. That's, that's what makes me think. Of. Yeah, that's, also that. Yeah. That's the joke that I've we've been saying for three weeks now. It's good. Explained out. Okay. <laughs> I heard the jokes work the best. When, when you, you have to explain when it. When I now. explain it, it makes it so much funnier. <laughs> well, I had to get Too Good to Tank explained to me, and I think we created it. TGTT. I don't know if we created it or did listeners or did Twitter people say Oh, it was absolutely. Every single week last year, we got Twitter questions. Is this team going to be too good to tank when Chris leaves? Is well, uh, uh, sorry. I need to clarify. I knew what Too Good to Tank was, but the hashtag TGTT, I was like, what is that? Yeah. I have, I have a question for you guys. I was oh. thinking about this yesterday. In hindsight, seeing how the West oh, stop. is playing out, mm-hmm. this is had the Thunder just kept the team they had last season and gone into this season, knowing that the Lakers are going to just disintegrate in front of us. Okay, knowing everything we know right now. It's, not, e- it's not even that for me. Hindsight. My deal is like some of the trades they made. So Dennis Schroeder, yeah, like adding either Danny Green to that roster, or just Al Horford, or Al Horford, yeah, and George Hill, yeah. So to have a team of Chris Paul, Shea Gilgis, Alexander, Lou Dort, George Hill, Al Horford, yeah. Well, let me Kenny. Gallo, Kenny. If you kept Gallo, yeah, Although Gallo's. I don't know. He's very uh to me. No, he's been. They could have brought him back. He's been good in spots. They though. could have brought him back. That hair, though. Here's my question to you, though, Andrew. Yeah. Question asker. Yeah, mm-hmm. they would have been a three top top four seed. <laughs> but do you believe that the Suns can actually win the championship? Absolutely. This year? Do you actually believe it? No, can I you don't really know. see it? I think the I think the champion will I come out. Of, I think the champion will come out of the East. Yeah. I just um, can't see them beating who comes. I out think of the they East. can definitely get to the finals, though. Dude. I, yeah. I don't know, man. At this point, yes. Yeah. I, they yeah. could beat Denver. I would it favor all, them over Denver. It's 100% Chris Paul's health to me. It's what it's it is. It's a big deal. It's a but, really big deal. But for me, it's like looking at Devin Booker, like he has a chance to be the best player on the floor all the way until maybe the Eastern Conference, right? Or yes. if they, you know, pay, play the Clippers because they yeah. have well, Jokic multiple will be, Jokic players. is better. Yeah. But I just like, is I was, campaign just, game have a chance to play guys, better. Man, I always think, but yeah, I Miles Bridges, I mean, is eight, campaign eight, I getting know. 21 points against the Nets in the finals? I Somebody did actually ask the question about campaign. Like, uh, I can't remember what it was, but but somebody did ask that question. Is, I mean, he's been in the league for like eight years. Yeah, I know it's weird. It still so it's feels like, like it makes sense that this would be the time where he would figure out what he is and who he could be. But man, it was so far off from that when he was in Oklahoma City. And he was hurt though. I mean, that was yeah. part of the. Yeah, that was the big even problem. Traded him to the Bulls, and then I he know. tore his knee again. Well, and he even talked. I mean, he's talked a lot about this. Is that like his attitude? The attitude shift that he had to have didn't take place until he was like humbled. Yeah, you know he 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 felt very secure in his NBA career whenever he was in Oklahoma City and didn't feel like he had to work for it. That's great. That's a good perspective. Yeah. So, why did he think that? I don't know, but he I had, mean, he took being the, a lottery pick. Like, there's a lot yeah. of reasons that these guys. He felt the, it's probably like that that moment where he's worked so so hard, and then he finally broke through. He's in the NBA. He thought, okay, I have arrived. You know, yeah. I've got this four year contract. Things are going to be great for me. I'm on this really good team that develop players really well. This is going to be 
it's just gonna be handed to me kind of thing. oh he did dance with russ every night too. Right, I I might, give might. russ so. is dancing with me i must be as good as him it's not unrelated um, it's related i still wouldn't be happy with the i mean if we did keep the same team mm -hmm. i guess i would still struggle with knowing like What's okay the, where is this going though? yeah well yeah but for yeah. one year you're gonna have a shot to be at least a chance to go to Western Conference Finals. I just wouldn't, believe, yeah, but you would. They would. They would have a chance. Because the problem is, is we'd have knowing if you had told me like you could go and you're gonna get, let's say, even better than that. But you're gonna go against like either the Warriors or this Grizzlies team or the Lakers. I'd say no. Let's not do no. Don't do it. Yeah. If if uh, we know so much now, so okay, well, because all of these have fallen in the way like the way that it like has. But if we back then, there's just no way that you could talk us into doing it because you'd be like, no way. What are we doing? That would, are we crazy? Like this is a horrible idea. Now, you know, and that's the question. I just think like now, Shay, uh, would I make Shay's development from now, last year to this year? Alongside Chris Paul, yeah, and it's I don't know, man. They would have been really good. Mm -hmm. They would have been good. Mm -hmm. But you're right. Like, there's a a clear expiration date on this team, and it really gets wonky with Shea five years into it, and then you're starting the rebuild. Yeah, yeah. and it's not like our, you know, they have Aiton and and Booker. Like, they still have this future post Chris. Yeah, Paul. they've gotten the number one pick. Yeah, and like we would have, you know, Stephen Adams or Horford. Yeah, Shay. I yeah. mean, we'd have I, Shay and Dort. But I'm not I don't trying to question the, the decision. Way. I'm just trying to. I'm just think. I just think that the opportunity in the West, like to like like right now, is so much different. Than yeah, it's been. it's yeah. way different. You I just mean, can't yeah. predict that though. Yeah, because the other thing is like, do we want do we want one year of possibly getting to the Western Conference Finals or like sustained success that we're looking yeah. to get that's with obviously all the goal. lottery picks? But you look at like. I the, wouldn't even do. I wouldn't do it today. What's so hard to you just can't predict some of this. Like Jamal Murray's injury makes it to where Denver obviously came back down to the level of what Oklahoma City would have been coming in. Mm -hmm. You know, like you. the Clippers, the Lakers. Mm -hmm. You know, Clippers are this weird. I don't know what they are, but you look at the Lakers. They're obviously their injuries. They're a champion. Is what they are. But their injuries made it to where they came back down to the level. You know, like yeah, yeah they're yeah, just yeah. unpredictable things, and so. Mm -hmm. I try to say goodbye. Yeah, Luke left. He gone. Peace. Uh, all right. Any other any other uh, thoughts on the playoffs before we move on? Um, nope. Predictions. Second round predictions. Philly, Atlanta. Who you guys got? Philly. God. Although Atlanta has been a lot of fun. I mean, if Embiid is actually healthy and can play like Embiid, then it's yeah. the Sixers. Yeah. It's. I will say this. Like we've been kind of more on the critical side of the way Atlanta had built this roster, but they built a pretty good roster around Trey. Yeah, it's yeah, like they're pretty good. DeAndre Hunter, I think Capella has been fantastic. Yeah, Capella's there. good. Uh I mean obviously John Collins is going to be the kind of wild card coming into this offseason, but right. I was impressed. I was very impressed with the Hawks. I actually thought the Knicks would win that series. But DeAndre Hunter turning out to be actually like a really good player yeah. is so good for them it's because a deal. it's such a big deal. Mm-hmm. Because you just can't have Trey and then rely on veterans the rest of his career. Like you can't do that. His right. Whole career. Exactly. And I think the question exactly. mark is going to be with that team is what what's their potential ceiling in the future? And that's where like the the mm -hmm. criticism has come from if they could have added maybe one of these five guys. Like, do yeah. they move their ceiling from you know Eastern Conference final contender with regularity to hey this team could actually win a championship yeah they could go to the finals kind of thing yeah yeah, yeah. that's that's the that's the question mark <clears throat> but having the team they have like with uh uh Bogdanovich and, and they're fun yeah they are fun yeah. they, they can play you know really multiple ways mm -hmm. they've got like everyone that's on the court besides Capella can pass can move the ball can put the ball on the deck a little bit yep. like They've got a they've got a solid solid team. Yeah, they're solid Shot makers. I, I wonder. It's shocking to me. I didn't watch it like with this kind of lens, but like, how were the Knicks not able to punish Trey Young? The Knicks were so bad. <sighs> they're terrible. So bad. Randall was horrible. Basically, like everything you thought about every single player at the beginning of the season before the the Knicks played a it's game true. is what is what came. To fruition yep. in the playoffs for them. It's like, yeah, Randall's okay. He's fine. 
you know, Alec Burks, he's just going to float around the league for forever. Derrick Rose is, yeah, like whatever Derrick Rose is, he's not going to yeah. carry you anywhere. Yeah. I mean, like every single guy turned out to be exactly what they thought we thought they were. That's yeah. so true. And it sucks because I, I don't actually think Julius Randle is as bad as he was in that series. I also don't think he was as good as he was in the regular no, season. No, right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, he was so bad in that series. It was like, this has to be a head. And this is completely yeah, Absolutely, because he yeah. was clearly frustrated. Like, so. Well, and the Knicks don't have the defenders that Philly has. Yeah. Like, Philly can throw somebody at Trey. Like, oh, yeah. The entire game. Yeah. Like, you can throw Tybal on him for 20 minutes. And then put Danny Green on it, who's like not the defender he was, but oh, he's still he's long. better than anything the Knicks have. Yeah. So I just wonder hey, I mean, what that looks like. You probably like. wouldn't put Ben Simmons on him with regularity, but you could. You, could. you definitely could. You could. You definitely could. And they have incredible rim protection if Embiid's there too. Right. right? So, so I, I, they're a problem for the Nets or for the Hawks. Yeah. yeah. What's Denver. your prediction for Milwaukee, Brooklyn? God. I think the Nets will win. I think I it'll be close. I don't think six or seven, probably. You know wh- how we were talking about the Bucks in that first round series, where it's like, okay, they were, they are, they were serious. On There's like yeah. something different this year. Yeah, this is the series where we really get to see it. Like, yeah, like okay, definitely. how serious is this? How real is this? for both for both teams? Really? Yeah, because I mean the Nets haven't been challenged at all yet. Oh god, we don't know what they look like under pressure. Yeah, so I'm interested to see both. And the the good thing about if you're rooting for Mil, for Milwaukee like I am, they've been through it. Like yeah. they've been through the failures, and they've yeah. gone through it as a group with the same coaching staff. They've made changes. They, I don't know that they're even afraid anymore. You know what I mean? And here's like the they're thing not afraid of that failure anymore. With Milwaukee too, their top three players are also their best defenders against the Nets' top three players. Yeah, yeah. and they, they play, match up like... yeah, They play both exactly. sides of the ball, Yeah, which is good. Which the Nets, they do not have that advantage. The now, Nets, they have more offense, but it'll be really interesting to see like oh, which they, one is going to... You could easily see these games ending in the 130s, right? Yeah. If, they, if they're in the 130s, the Nets are going to win in five. That's what I was thinking. It's I struggle to see how the Bucks win those I, if it's I just think like that. that They've got to keep the Nets to like a hundred. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I think I think yeah. there's a chance that the Bucks are going to score. I hope so. Yeah. I hope with yeah. a lot. Of I just teams. don't think they can keep up if I, it goes into a scoring battle. Yeah, if it, yeah. if it, if it becomes that, if you're playing in the one thirties, one forties, like it's, it's that's that's the Nets series. That's how they're going to win the title. Is if they're going to score 135 points. Dude, a game. they've got to be they've got to be defense and then kind of trying to beat the nets up on the other end you know like playing tough like playing hard yeah they gotta average like five dunks a game or something yeah they gotta use which is good that brooke lopez they're actually using him closer to the rim a little bit more this uh, what is brooke lopez in this series that's one of the questions like are they gonna be able to keep him on the floor they'll i mean they'll go to him in the post a lot i mean that's what they've been doing He's gonna get some open threes in this series he'll, too. He will get a lot of I just shots. Think they're, I think he's just he, not even shooting threes. I think he'll he'll eat up whoever is at center for them. Yeah, for the next. He was still taking well, some corners. Threes, Jordan, but, yeah. hmm? who's playing their center position? I didn't even really see minutes when DeAndre they'll Jordan play. Was on the they'll play Griffin. No, no, no. Like Claxton will play there. Griffin will play there. Yeah. Oh gosh, Brooke is going to slaughter Blake Griffin. Dude, I bet you DeAndre will get some minutes against yeah. against him just because he is their their biggest big up. guy. That'll be yeah. it. that's for me. I mean, that's not this is not revolutionary thinking, but mm-hmm. I, I absolutely think that this is that's the best series of the next round, right? Yeah, yeah. For okay, sure. so if you're ranking them, I think you go that one. I think that probably the Denver Phoenix that's which, gonna be fun. whichever one from the Western Conference, the U- Utah Clippers. Clippers. Is going to be really interesting. They're all four pretty good. I think the Hawks one obviously is the, the lamest one, but it's yeah, still, it is. could be a good series. Yeah, yeah it, it could. Be, yeah, 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 definitely. It's, Second round is going to be fun. Playoffs have been great so far, and it is. And having fans back in the arena is unbelievable. It complete even on TV, it changes the whole completely. feel completely. Mm-hmm. And they're all ramped. Ramped. All these people were like, "We've been sitting inside for Dude, a year, just freaking right. out, from bottles and popcorn." And, running on the court bottles of popcorn Bye. all right everybody go to the athletic.com slash down to dunk and get the athletic for 3.99 a month
enjoy the playoffs. Peace.